Hello guys, it's Ben here. Welcome back to another video. It's been a long time. It's been a long international break. I say that every single time, but it has. I mean, I haven't made a video. I've been away on holiday, resting, not watching any football apart from the Old England game. And yeah, not really thinking about the Reds. And what a lovely couple of weeks that's been. Or Even though we're top of the league and we should be happy about life. Um, yeah, here we are again with a big... Big game to get back into it at Wembley on Saturday afternoon against Tottenham Hotspur. It is the scene of the biggest of crimes last season, that 4-1 defeat. Um, OK, we lost 5-0 at City and there were other heartbreaking defeats, but the 4-1 at Spurs was a real low point. I came on here afterwards whinging about us not signing a centre-back, whinging about the transfer strategy, whinging about us still being miles behind, whinging about some of Klopp's decisions, some of the substitutions. Uh, and yeah, it has been uphill ever since we got to the Champions League final and now we're top of the league and everything is great. So let's go into this game at Wembley with, you know, full of confidence and full of belief that we can actually turn these over. We did have a good record of Spurs away for a brief period in the sort of mid 2010s, if that's the way of saying it. Um, remember the 5-0 in 13-14, remember the 3-0. Um, in 14-15, then it was a couple of draws uh, when Klopp first took over. We got the 0-0 and then they won all the season after that. And then obviously last season, disaster struck. Day and Lovren really struggled. Menule really struggled. Neither of those guys are going to be in the team this weekend. Um, who is going to be in the team um, is, is, is a flurry of new signings that have, have really kind of elevated us. Hopefully beyond Tottenham. I mean, I, I know they like to talk about the fact they finished by about, what is it, eight out of the last ten seasons and... There's a weird rivalry going on between us and them. I think it's mainly their fans really enjoying the fact they're part of the big time, or as, as, as they like to call themselves, part of the big time now. They think they're um, on our level, um, and not just me being a, a petulant you know, fan of one team in that little rivalry. They're not. They are not going to, you know, they're not going to, I'm not going to guarantee things, but you know, you'd be surprised if they finished above us this season. You'd be surprised if they won another trophy before us, even though we've done so. Um, or we've failed to do so in the last few years, but you know they're, they're winning even less. As much as they're doing well and putting the pressure on every season, um, Spurs are Spurs, and they've not signed a single player. I know they did great to win at Old Trafford 3-0, and I know they've got a great squad. I really like Lucas Moura. I really like Son Heung-min, who I, I presume isn't going to be back. Deli Alley, um, Ericsson, all these attacking players that are great to watch, but they've got a weak midfield, as far as I'm concerned. I know Dembele... And Dyer are, are strong figures, imposing figures in there. Um, I imagine only one of them will start this weekend. It'll probably be Dembele. Um, but in terms of complete midfield of, with, with their creativity, uh, that's where they're lacking. I mean, Moussa Sissoko played the first game of the season. Dembele doesn't get any goals. Um, you know, Obviously, Eriksen plays that 10, and 10 role. And he's magic. And Dele Alli sometimes drops in as well. And he's obviously superb. But yeah, as a complete midfield and as a complete squad and team, um, I'd still argue that now, for the first time in a while, ours is actually stronger than theirs. Um, normally we've been getting by on you know, just, just a, a great striker or whatever it is. But now we're fully equipped to beat Spurs at Wembley. And, um, you know, do I think we'll do so? It's going to be very tough. The bookies have got Spurs as slight favourites. Skybet have got a 7-4 to four for Spurs, 7-5 to five for Liverpool, so you can barely split them. Um, obviously Spurs being slight favourites, but still odds against... Uh, really magnifies how tight this game is. I mean, the back three of Vatong and Sanchez and Alderweireld on paper and even in practice at times, you know, Old Trafford, of course, they were they were great. Um, United did miss chances in that game, um, but at Watford they capitulated, set pieces, you know, with their undoing, and you don't necessarily associate that with Spurs, but that is what happened. Um, and have they really got the 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 best defence in the league that maybe they've been kind of. Um, you know, people have said they've got. I mean, Chelsea have been given that name a few times in years gone by. Man United had it when they, when they weren't conceding many goals when Mourinho first came in. Um, a lot of nil-nils, obviously, but Liverpool aren't going to be far behind now. I mean, Man City have got flaws. Um, Spurs have got flaws, which I'm sure we'll look to exploit um, on Saturday, but Liverpool aren't far away. We've conceded one goal this season. It was Alisson's mistake. Um, not even just the personnel in that back four, but the, the leadership of Van Dijk, the confidence of Allison, Joe Gomez, who physically looks in the best shape of his life and mentally just looks like nothing phases him. He's in his preferred centre back role. And we've got the two full backs who will make mistakes this season. They're not perfect and they're not, you know, when you think of the great defence of the Premier League, you think of the Ashley Cole, uh, Cavalio, Terry, P uh, Ferreira back four, full of men, full of experienced pros. It's very different to that. It's not your, you know, your Neville, Ferdinand, 
Vidic and Evra back four full of men. It's it's different, it's youthful, but it's one of confidence, one of playing the ball out from the back, um, one of panache, one of good set-piece delivery, one of good delivery from all wide areas, really. Um, and it feeds into that midfield, um, which is unpredictable to, to predict who's going to start. Um, Jordan Henderson took a lot of stick after the Leicester game. Gini Van Alden didn't have his best game there either at the King Power, so where do you really go from there? Naby Keita um, didn't play... Uh, against the Foxes, he played well in the first few games, though, particularly the first two at Palace, he was terrific. So, you know, you, where do you really go with it? So the back five, what we know is Alisson, Trent, Van Dijk, Gomez and Robertson. Um, but yeah, coming onto the midfield, Jordan Henderson, um, you know, he played for England against Spain. I thought he wasn't great there either, to be honest with you. Fabinho has been playing at right back for Brazil. Is he ready to be thrust straight into midfield? I know a lot of you guys will want him to be. I honestly don't know if he's ready for that. I think Jordan Henderson might be the, the guy that's selected here. I think James Milner will keep his place. And then you pick him between Wijnaldum and, and Keita, really. So, who do you go over Spurs away? Um, I'd like to see us go for Keita. I really would. I think Wijnaldum deserves to sit out after that kind of pretty limp display at Leicester, you know. Uh, the big away games is Wijnaldum going to show up. This sort of game Emery Chan would have been great for, you know. Uh, but Naby Keita, why not? Let's see what he's all about at Spurs away. And then the front three of um, Mane, Salah and Firmino do their thing. Um, no one seems to have played too much football over this international break as far as Liverpool players are concerned. So that's positive. Uh, no fresh injury concerns except for Lallana. Um, Dejan Lovren's had a setback. So um, Joe Gomez, as it looks like, will be keeping his place for the foreseeable until the end of October at least, which is when Lovren is likely to come back. Um, but Gomez, by that point, may well have established himself as clearly the uh, the first choice alongside Van Dijk. So, I mean, this is one of the hardest games to predict. Um, you know, if you look at how Spurs play, they're probably going to go three at the back. How is that three at the back going to match up against what you'd imagine would be a pretty orthodox front three of ours, even though we're going to interchange? Um, will they go Ben Davis or Danny Rose on the left? Um, you'd imagine it'll be Trippier on the right. Um, and then will it be a midfield triangle of Dembele, Ali and Eriksen? Will they go for a bit more steel in there? Maybe bring Eric Dyer in as well to try and combat that front three. I mean, it'll be interesting to see how they line up. If I look at um, the predicted lineups of, of all the kind of various outlets, it's not it's not certain either way. Spurs always rotate their fullbacks, and uh, you're never too sure what the midfields are going to be too. So interesting to see. It's the early game, so of course we're setting the pace this weekend. Um, other teams are doing really well. You know, Chelsea. Uh, winning re with regularity at the moment, maybe not something we expected with a new manager and their relatively tough start to the season. They're having to play Arsenal early on, um, a trip to Newcastle. Uh, they navigated that quite easily, Huddersfield and Bournemouth too. So fair play to them. Are they going to be title contenders? Maybe so. I still think Spurs are going to be right up there, even though I've kind of slagged them off in the opening part of this video saying that um, there's much more chance of us winning the league. There is, but... You have to respect Spurs have a 30 goal striker in Harry Kane. They've got one of the most, you know, creative midfielders in the league in Christian Eriksen. They've got Dele Alli, who is capable of world class performances on this day. And they have got a very solid defence. You know, let's let's uh, Watford aside that 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 you know they, those three centre backs are all ones that I think would start for most Premier League sides. I mean, you'd probably take any of the that the, those three and probably start them alongside Van Dijk you know I love Joe Gomez as much as the next man but those are three with the exception of Sanchez who um, got a good season under his belt last year started most of the games um, you know the other two Oliver Eld and Vertonghen are so experienced um, and yeah I mean they, they, you can see why Man United or Mourinho wanted Oliver Eld so much and uh, Vertonghen is such a mainstay at Tottenham side so what are your predictions guys leave a comment with your predictions for this game it's you know, coming back off an international break, you never really know um, where you stand with form. Obviously, that's kind of that first four games that we spoke about, that the the four games that we've managed to win have been and gone. We've got the 12 points in the bag. I think we're now moving on to a completely different phase of the season. We might see new systems or new tactics or new ways of playing introduced, new times of substitutions. You know, it's that block of four games is very much its own entity. And, you know... That entity didn't involve the likes of Fabinho. It didn't involve the likes of Nathaniel Klein, who might get more of a look in um, very soon. Um, obviously, it hasn't involved John Matip. Um, hasn't involved Lana, who's obviously had a setback. Hasn't involved Shakiri as much as we might have thought. Hasn't involved Daniel Sturridge much. So, 
Let's see how we get through this next few games. I mean, obviously, there's going to be an international break after the City game, I believe. So um, Spurs, then Southampton at home. Obviously, PSG in between that. So we've got the PSG game on Tuesday night to think about, although I doubt that'll be on Klopp's mind as he's picking his team for Tottenham. But PSG on the horizon. And then we've got... I mean, the games are going to come thick and fast, as we know. As, as the Champions League draw came out, and we saw the PSG, Napoli and Red Star Belgrade draw, which is one of the toughest ones we could have got. And then Chelsea in the League Cup. Everyone's sort of posting the graphics on Twitter of all the the games and how difficult they are, are, are going to be. So, you know, we go to home to PSG, home to Southampton, home to Chelsea, a lot of home games. Then we go away to Chelsea, um, then it's away at Napoli, then home to City before the next international break. So it's another big block of fixtures this time. So there will be rotation. You will see Fabinho. Don't you worry, you will see Fabinho. Those of you that have been commenting on every single video um, complaining about that. But yeah, I'm sure the Brazilian will be in action. And yeah, hopefully we'll see Shaqiri do some bits in the reminiscent of his goal against United in pre-season. So, if you're going to push me for a prediction for Spurs away, I'm going to have to sit on the fence. I'm going to have to uh, get some splinters up my ass. I am going to go for a draw here. I think it might be a 1-1 draw. Um, we may well take the lead. I, I can see a similar game to the 16-17 game. Maybe, maybe a penalty to take the lead and then Spurs onslaught second half. Um, you know, Harry Kane has ended the August hoodoo. Uh, by scoring a couple of goals in that month. So he, you know, we all know he does well in September anyway and gets right among the goals, so you have to be wary of that. Um, will there be any scars from last season? I honestly don't think there will be because the personnel has changed so much. Um, you know, the goalkeeper for a start, I mean, I know Alisson made a mistake at Leicester and I know that's a big problem, um, but he's had, a, he's had the whole break to get over that and to kind of erase that from his mind. Um, playing out from the back is something that both these teams like to do um, and, and pressing is something both, both these teams like to do. So it'll be very interesting to see how that pans out. These are two quite similar teams in terms of attitude. Um, a young, vibrant manager that's got his style that players buy into. I think players really enjoy playing for both clubs. It's not one you want to get out of like Man United is at times um, or even Arsenal to an extent. So two happy, fairly young squads um, in what I'm sure would be a very exciting entertaining game of football. A lot of high pressing, a lot of chances, a lot of creativity um, in both front lines. So let's hope our front three can be actually ruthless this time and actually click because let's face it, let's be honest, they've all, with the exception of Sadio Mane, they've, who was good up until um, the Leicester game, they've all been pretty poor. I mean, Mane was poor against Brighton as well, I should say. He was great against Palace and West Ham, but other than those two performances for Mane, the front three in general have been pretty poor so far let's uh let's be honest about things and they cannot afford to be here because we are going to be restricted in terms of chances there will be maybe three or four opportunities throughout the game whether they're clear cut or not remains to be seen whether we take them or not we have to if we're going to win this game i think it's going to be a draw i think um you know i'm going to go for james milner to score to score for liverpool um from the penalty spot and i'm going to go for harry kane to score for spurs um, would I take a draw? Yeah, I don't see why not. I mean, it might mean we're not top of the league after the uh, this round of fixtures, but Spurs away is a very, very tough fixture. And, you know, I think if we can get four points from Spurs this season, if we can get, you know, if we can get four points from Spurs, Man United, um, Arsenal and Chelsea, I think you've got to take that. And you, you, City maybe is slightly different. You might even take three points from City. But, um, yeah, if we can take... We, we've got to improve on these big away games on as you know, compared to what we did last season. Season before that, we were fine. It was the small games that were bothering us. Now, last season, we lost at Chelsea. Uh, we lost at United. Lost at Spurs. Drew at Arsenal. Um, took a battering at Man City. Um, and the home games were not necessarily... All I did was I'll see that, you know, drawing against Chelsea, United, Spurs, um, and beating City and Arsenal. So the big games, this is the first one out of the 10 against the uh, rest of the big six. And it needs to be a positive result. And I think a draw is positive, not brilliant. I mean, I won't be coming home and celebrating with, a, you know, getting my friends on for a party. But I'll be happy, um, depending on the circumstances and the uh, the way in which the game goes. If we can see the like, equaliser, then obviously it's different. But... Would you be happy with the draw, guys? Leave a comment with your thoughts. Who do you want to see start? I mean, it's quite a, an open brief in terms of who's going to start the game. Do you want to see Fabinho introduce at right-back, maybe? Do you want to see him in midfield, which I presume all of you will, rather than Jordan Henderson? Um, do you want to see maybe Shakiri play? Any thoughts, welcome. Let me know uh, and subscribe to my channel if you are new. The vlog will be up on Saturday evening. I'm going to Wembley. I'm going to the game. But my first trip to Wembley uh, as an away fan you know, of Liverpool, so um, I didn't go last season. 
but I'm going tomorrow uh, Saturday and yeah excited and yeah make sure you follow me on Instagram to follow my progress throughout the day I'm very active on Instagram with lives and stories and posts and whatever so make sure you're doing that and I'll see you next time